Here we've got a nice geometry problem that we're going to solve using first semester differential calculus. So our setup is that we've got two squares with side length one. So here's one over here, and then there's one right here that's been tilted a little bit. And our goal is to find the maximum value of this quantity y right here. So I want to notice that this y is constructed by finding the line from this vertex of the square to this vertex of the other square, and then that intersection up here with this vertical line, which intersects this kind of leftmost vertex of the tilted square. So first off, notice that the minimum value of y is obviously 1, and we get that by rotating the square until its bottom side is in line with this lower line. Okay, so let's see what we need to do in order to find this maximum value. So we're gonna put this in the coordinate plane. So I'm gonna say that this coordinate right here is x, and so it's along the x-axis as, well, so as well, so this will be the coordinate x comma zero. Okay, great. And then since this has side length one, we know this coordinate over here will be x plus one comma zero. And then again, this is side length 1, so we know this coordinate right here is x plus 1 comma 1. And now we can really keep going, so we know this coordinate right here is x comma 1. Now next, I'm going to introduce an angle that we will eventually eliminate from the picture, but we'll need it for a little bit. I'm going to call it theta, and it'll be this angle right here. So notice if that is theta, that makes this distance right here sine theta. So that makes this coordinate right here x comma sine theta. And I'll put the sine theta in blue because we'll eventually, like I said, eliminate the dependence on theta so that everything will be in terms of x. Okay, so now let's see what we've got over here. So these two angles are going to be complementary, and that's because theta plus 90 degrees plus whatever this angle needs to be 180. So I'll write that as pi over 2 minus theta. And then likewise, this also has measure angle theta, kind of for the same reason. So that tells us that we know this coordinate down here. So this will be sine theta comma zero. And again, I put the sine theta in blue because we'll eventually, like I said, replace that with something in terms of x. So now similarly, we know this coordinate up here will be zero comma cosine theta. Furthermore, we know that the length of this line segment is cosine theta, giving us the identity that x equals sine theta plus cosine theta. So that's actually gonna be pretty important. Okay, so let's see if we can fill in anything else. So we'll add a couple of line segments in. So one line segment will come down from here so that it would be perpendicular to the x-axis and connect off with this thing here. Okay, good. So now I want to notice that since this is angle theta, this is pi over 2 minus theta, that's going to make this thing right here also equal to theta for the same reason that we had described before over here. Okay, and that also makes this here angle theta. Okay, nice. Now next, we could set this bit equal to A, so that hypotenuse. That makes this distance right here A sine theta. Then we can set this bit equal to b. That makes this bit b sine theta. And then furthermore, we know a plus b equals 1. So that means the distance from here, I'll put this in orange to here, I'll put that in orange as well, is sine theta. We know this coordinate is x comma 0. That makes this coordinate right here x minus sine theta comma 1. But by that formula up there, we know that x minus sine theta is cosine theta. So let's maybe put that here. So we've got this coordinate is cosine theta and comma 1. Now next, we'll also complete a triangle over here by taking a horizontal line in this direction. 
noticing that this angle is complementary to theta, so it's pi over two minus theta. So that tells us that this height right here is equal to sine theta, again, because we see that this angle here is theta, but that makes this coordinate zero comma cosine theta plus sine theta. So we know that cosine theta plus sine theta is x, so that makes this coordinate right here zero comma x. And then while we're at it, we'll fill in this coordinate right here, which is zero comma y. Okay, great. So now those are all of the points that we need. And now what we'd like to do is take this formula right here and somehow solve for sine theta and or cosine theta so that we can eliminate the sines and the cosines from here and everything will be in terms of x. So let's maybe see how we could do that. We'll take this formula and then we'll square it. That'll give us x squared equals sine squared theta plus two sine theta cos theta plus cos squared theta. We know sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. We can move that over, leaving us with x squared minus one equals two sine theta cosine theta. We'll replace cosine theta with x minus sine theta, giving us two times sine theta and then x minus sine theta. But now looking at this carefully, we see that we have a quadratic equation where sine theta is like the variable that we can use to solve for sine theta in terms of x. So let's maybe write that down uh, carefully. So we've got two sine squared theta. So that comes from two sine theta times sine theta, and then minus two x sine theta. So that comes from two sine theta times x. And then I've moved those to the other side of the equation. That's why the signs changed. And then we have plus x squared minus one equals zero. So now we can use the quadratic formula on this and we'll see that sine theta will be equal to the following expression in terms of x. It is one half and then x plus the square root of two minus x squared. So we've got that as the value of sine theta. And then cosine theta, we know is x minus sine theta, which means we can easily get an expression for cosine theta as well. So let's see what it is. So that is going to be 1 half x minus the square root of 2 minus x squared. So now what we'll do is take this value of sine theta in terms of x, this value of cosine theta in terms of x, and plug it in everywhere here, and we're about ready to go on to the next step. On the last board, we introduced an angle into our picture. We called it theta, and then we expressed lots of points in the plane in terms of that angle. Finally, we were able to express sine of that angle and cosine of that angle in terms of x, where x comma zero is this coordinate right here. So I filled everything in from that analysis. Okay, so next what we'll do is calculate the slope of this line here two different ways. So we'll first calculate it using this point and this point. And then next we'll calculate it using this point and this point. And then that'll give us an equation for y in terms of x that we can maximize, like I said before, using first semester calculus. Okay, so first taking the slope between this line and this line, we'll get one minus y over x plus one. So like I said, that's gonna be this slope right here. Now next, we'll take the slope between this point and this point, and let's see what we'll get. So we'll get change of y over change of x. So let's see, that'll be equal to one minus x over x plus one minus one half times x minus the square root of x, 
well, square root of two minus x squared. So we've got something like that. So now we need to go about simplifying this and solving for y. So maybe first off, let's multiply by a minus one on both sides. That'll cancel this to y minus one and cancel this to x minus one. Next, we can multiply by x plus one, giving us y minus one equals x squared minus one over, well now we need to simplify that denominator. So we have x minus half x, so that's gonna be half x plus one, and then plus half times the square root of two minus x squared. Okay, nice. So now we can add one to both sides and we have y equals one plus x squared minus one over one half x plus one plus one half square root of two minus x squared. Now next, maybe what we'd like to do is multiply the numerator and the denominator of this second term by two just to make it look a little nicer, and then we're ready to jump into the calculus part. So let's see, we've got y equals one plus two x squared minus two over x plus two plus square root of two minus x squared, like that. Okay, so now let's bring that to the top and we'll discuss the next steps. Okay, so I brought our formula for y to the top of the board, and it's kind of gnarly, but if we just go through it step by step, it shouldn't be too bad. So like I said, we wanna maximize the value of y. That's our whole goal. We're gonna use differential calculus, so that means we need to take the derivative in order to find the critical points. Those critical points will allow us to find the maximum. So here we'll use just the quotient rule. So we'll have y prime equals, we don't need to worry about this one because it's a constant, the derivative of a constant is zero. So the derivative of the numerator, four x times the denominator, x plus two plus two minus x squared to the half. And then from that, we need to subtract the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. So let's see, the derivative of the denominator will be one plus one half times two minus x squared to the minus half but then we're going to need to multiply by negative 2x because of this minus x squared inside. So that's gonna leave me with a minus x here. And then, like I said, we need to multiply by the numerator, which is 2x squared minus two. And then all of this is over the denominator, which is x plus two plus two minus x squared to the half. So we wanna set this derivative equal to zero to find the critical points, but then we're subtracting two big objects in the numerator, so those need to be equal in order for us to get zero in the numerator. Those two big things I'll overline in red, so it's this guy and this guy. So instead of setting that numerator equal to zero, what we really can do is just erase the denominator and change that minus sign to an equal sign and then we've got an equation to solve. Okay, so let's maybe do that. Okay, so upon our discussion from the last board, we have this equation to solve. So let's maybe expand this a little bit. We'll have four x squared plus eight x plus four x times two minus x squared to the half. So that's our left-hand side. And then our right-hand side will be two x squared minus two, and then plus two x minus two x cubed times two minus x squared to the minus half. And now we're at the point where this is not super fun to solve by hand. So it's most definitely possible to solve by hand, but you could also plug it into Wolfram Alpha or Mathematica or something. So I'll just jump to the solution. What you get here is x equals one half, and then you'll have minus one plus the square root of five. And then next it'll be minus the square root of two times the square root of five minus two. So in the end, you can reduce this to a quartic polynomial, and then you can solve that quartic polynomial to get this value for x. But that's the value of x that we need. Our goal was to find the maximum value of y. So you can take this value of x and plug it into y. And again, after some reduction, which is really just kind of a pain, but 
not really too complicated, you can get the following value. So you'll get y equals one plus the square root of 10 times the square root of five minus 22. And so that's our maximum value of y. And that's a good place to stop.